Hey y'all, I'm Edmund. And I'm Heather. And this is All Positive Reviews. So, we've decided to delve into a wonderful little Hulu show called The Handmaid's Tale. Tonight is a celebration of Gilead and of what we have achieved. We only wanted to make the world better. Better? Better never means better for everyone. I want to keep on living for her. Remember your scripture. Blessed are the meek. And blessed are those who suffer for the cause of righteousness. I don't know if that's it. Wonderful. I mean, the show is great. Yeah, it's kind of the scariest show on television. I watch it from behind a chair. But we love it. We think it's important. And we want to talk about it here on All Positive Reviews. Oh, yeah. Now, this one, season one, is the book uh, season. Yes. Because this is based off of a 1985 Margaret Atwood novel, and this season pretty much adapts it. Yeah, it's pretty close. I, I haven't read the book, although I've talked to a lot of people who have who say it's close. I think we get a little bit more in the mm -hmm. TV show than we do in the book, even in the first season. Yeah, because you, like, one of the things with the show is that you jump from all these different perspectives. Right. Like, you start off with Elizabeth Moss's uh, right. June slash Offred and her perspective of from before this crazy situation happened to mm -hmm. after. But you jump around. You jump around to some people who helped bring it about. Right. You jump to some people who were just affected by it. Right. You get to see June's friends mm -hmm. and uh, her husband. Yep. Yep. And the machinations and the minds behind Gilead, this oh. chauvinist totalitarian place that caused, you know, fertile women to be brood mares of the state, to put it, you know, very, very delicately. Yeah. Because this show is 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 and isn't delicate. Oh, it's not delicate at all. I mean, I don't know how it is delicate. It's delicate in the way it's kind of put together. Like uh. it's very like, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. At certain points. Oh, like, no, this show has some of the most beautiful cinematography. You get all these gorgeous landscapes. Yes. Like, this environment feels so lived in. But so much of it is from the handmaid's perspective. And they have such a narrow field of vision yes. because of the hoods. Yes. So it's such a shallow depth of field yes. or whatever. Like, it's all on their faces. And it just, it heightens the tension. Yes. But you are right, though. It is a brutal so so brutal brutal show mm -hmm. because because the story of this you're watching elizabeth moss who plays this part magnificently oh so well of a woman trapped in this totalitarian state forced to be a handmaid for just two of the worst people oh the waterfords oh they're so awful they're, they're just terrible you, you have commander waterford uh voldemort's younger brother uh, Joseph Fiennes, the slimiest He's so gross. military commander who has just kind of ruined Scrabble uh, for yeah, me a little bit. I can bit. never play Scrabble again. Do you know how to play? Yes. Good. I mean, it's great for dramatic effect and for just like making you really tense anytime yes. this guy comes around because he's the type who who he talks like very low yeah. and down, so you have to like listen. Dude, to he probably he does says. it to make her get close to him. <sighs> Joseph Fiennes does an amazing job being gross. He's he's so great at this part, and I mean that just says a lot because I'm sure he's not this type of a disgusting human being in real life, but in this part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one, Serena Joy, just this, she is the Cersei Lannister of the show, where she is this pretty evil character who yeah. does, like, despicable things and is, like, a big antagonist. Yeah. But she's also not, like, the ultimate antagonist. Like, she helped bring this about. Yeah. And when they tell you that, oh, oh it's one of the best moments, because she was a novelist and she was a big pundit and she perpetuated this whole, like, let's go back to conservative period Puritan times lifestyle. And, and then when she brings us about, she's not allowed to read or write anymore because, you know, she's a woman. And her book gets thrown in the trash. They burn her book. Oh, that's true. You do get yeah. the one shot of uh, Oh, yeah, of it they throw it away too. But I just like the fact that they burned the books. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, what goes around comes around in this. Because <laughs> yeah. because it is like you are scared. They they lay out the groundwork for how it happened very well through mm -hmm. a series of flashbacks and it feels like it could happen or you know, yes. it feels kind of like it really could happen in the next five or ten years, maybe yeah. sooner. But also there is just this constant threat of like everyone is watching, you yeah. know, and there's really no escape for her and women in general. Or men. I mean, it's mostly women that are oppressed, but men have to watch themselves as well. I mean, anybody could tell on you. I mean, not only are the ones who are supposed to be watching you watching you, the ones who walk around with big guns, yeah. but then there's also, you know, maybe your friends, but maybe not. Maybe, you know, they'll just tell on you. <laughs> or maybe yes. they'll get tortured until yeah. they tell on you. Or it's terrible. In a great story way. Like, that that's the thing. It's a hard show to watch. It is not a show that is for everyone, but it is a show that should at least be, you know, heard about. You should, yeah. you know, you should learn about what it's talking about because, damn, it has a lot to say. Yes. And despite all those really tense, scary moments, oh, there there's are some moments. great moments. No, I love the flip in this show that you get because it's it'll just be awful, awful, awful. And right around the time you're like, oh my God, this is like the worst thing ever. You get a moment of, oh wow, this is great. And, and then you'll be like great for a little while and you'll be filling up on cloud nine and then you'll get the end of episode two, which mm -hmm. is just this turn and it's just so well done Auckland. i can tell her that the commander is going to washington will she be surprised by the scrabble game she'll be glad i let him win i know that much she'll be proud of me for that that's would be the fruit it's a season that as a whole, it moves along at a nice pace because there's only yeah. 10 episodes yeah. the first season. And and lately with streaming, I've kind of tended to like the, the less than 13. Yeah. Shout out Stranger Things. It goes along at a nice mm -hmm. pace, even though it's a slow burn, like so much is happening that it feels like it takes forever. Yeah. But before you know it, you're like halfway through the show and lots of crazy shit has happened. No kidding. It culminates in an amazing last episode. Oh, wonderful, yes. And, the you know, some of the last shots of that episode are some of the most beautiful shots, even though some of them are terrible moments in the show. Mm -hmm. They're beautifully done, beautifully executed moments. And moments of hope. That That's the main thing, is it gives you those little nuggets of hope and payoff yeah. to keep you going. And to oh, be yeah. like, no, this isn't just a show of watching these people suffer endlessly, <laughs> you know? Yes. You, you kind of feel like you're just being tortured for a while. But then you get wow. something. And then, and then there's a little bit more torture and then you get something and when I say torture I don't mean torture to watch it it's just a wonderful show to watch I just mean that people are going through torture in the show you know for every Janine losing her eye oh, you get a Offred being able to send a secret message to someone right you get those nice those nice moments like that that keep carrying you along and what helps punctuate that the amazing soundtrack yes there are so many good ones from uh, Don't You Forget About Me oh, yeah. to Nina Simone to mm -hmm. all these different ones that just hit you hard. Oh, yeah. They, and they, they do the cues perfectly, of course. Every song has a, a reason for why it's in that moment. It's neat how well set up and well thought out everything in this show is from the music to the colors that yep. the people wear to the way shooting is done when you're on different people. You know what I mean? It's it's very interesting how well they place you in this world. I'm glad you brought up those colors too because it's a very subtle costume design choice to do just the, you know, the, the different color coded system yeah. for all of them, but it works so well. It's so striking yeah. visually. Yes, it is. We've talked about, you know, Elizabeth Moss and the the Waterfords, but there's yeah. a host of great supporting people. Yes, we could start with Aunt Lydia. Who's the real scariest one on this show. Like, the yes. Waterfords make you uncomfortable. You want to take a shower after the Waterfords. Yeah. But Aunt Lydia is the one who feels like a fully fleshed out villain. Like, yeah. even one that you understand where she's coming from. Yeah. She's one of the ones who actually believes this is the yes. only way to go. She believes in the system. She wants the system to work. She thinks it does work, and she is wholeheartedly in it. And if you are not, she will force you to be. Girls. Hmm. I know this must feel very strange. 
but ordinary is just what you're used to. This may not seem ordinary to you right now, but after a time it will. This will become ordinary. And she, you know, it's not just physical intimidation with her. because She's, you know, just an older woman, but she will break you oh, yeah. down yes. in a heartbeat. And, you know, June's struggle for this whole season is I have to find out where my daughter is right. and I have to get away from the Waterfords. Right. But the real, you know, the real endgame struggle I'm sensing is her and Aunt Lydia in kind of the same way like Django and Steven. Yes both oppressed by the system, but you're someone who's perpetuating it. Yeah. Versus me, I'm trying to escape it. Right. And that's not cool, man. <laughs> Some of those handmaids who are oppressed. Oh, you have wonderful ones. You have Janine, who you mentioned before, who loses the eye, who's just like, you know, she just needs a hug. She's just like a little child. And then um, Moira. Oh, who Moira. Is the good friend, and you get to see her in the flashbacks, and you get to see her own part of the story. Throughout, you get her point of view for a little while. Great reveal of uh, what happens with her, because they hide, they hide what happens with her and the husband, Luke, yeah. for a while. Yes, but then you get an episode you know entitled to them and developing those two characters honestly those uh th those episodes were some of the best walking dead i've seen recently just yeah. minus zombies right exactly but, you know, everything else about right. the walking dead you have alexis bladell oh. emily who crushes you but has some terrific moments oh as yes well, including you know some joy rides <laughs> yes I, I i love the handmaids that just won't give up that no matter what they just continue yeah there's a there's a sense of family in there because they're all stuck in this shitty situation no it's neat to see the the families that come together because you have the wives yeah who they kind of act like they're together more than they actually are mm -hmm. you know what i mean they're kind of nice to each other yeah but that's that fake nice it's the fake nice however the handmaids are actually nice to each other yeah, they are. And they really like support right. each other. Kind of the kind of the culmination of the whole season is watching these women stuck in this terrible situation bond and grow together into yeah. an army. Yes. They didn't want us to be an army. They shouldn't have put us in uniform. Exactly. And those, you know, those them that put them in uniform. We already mentioned Aunt Lydia and the Waterfords. Yes. But you do have some people who are not handmaids, who are also still stuck, stuck in the system. Right. Like Nick, who is kind of the, he's the mystery character yeah. in here. Because you never quite know where his allegiances lie. But you always feel like his intentions at heart are good. Right. Like, you don't know exactly where he's going to be because he's supposed to be an I, who mm -hmm. are the people who watch and tattle on anyone who's doing yep. anything wrong. So he's an I. However, he really likes June mm -hmm. and he really likes people. So he does try to help. He doesn't want people to get hurt. He, he tries to do his best. Yeah. But he's also, also supposed to be this tattletale. So you really don't know exactly where you stand sometimes. Yeah, you don't. But you also know their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has that stake right. in it of we can't get out of Gilead. Right. And, you know, we can't all run to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Won't work. Or the, the Western United States, since this is a civil war with it, like, split yeah. in the middle. So here in California is... Uh, pretty good i think i think it's it's children of men on on crack yeah. kind of just the whole you know bad fertility situation and low birth rates and they do a great job of setting that up in the flashbacks yes. like you mentioned how excellent the world is realized it is the foundation yes is very well laid out mm -hmm. as well like you see it creep in in layers and steps and gradations until yeah the only chance you have is to fucking run yep you know, I think it's a terrific season. Yes. One of my favorite seasons of television in yes. the last, like, you know, it, for, it's decades best for me. You know, it's, that's decade best of list right there. That ends on, you know, a, a little bit of ambiguous shot. But no, it's, it's definitely a cliffhanger ending. And yet you still feel, like, amped. Right. There, there's, it's a cliffhanger, but you're left with a little bit of extra hope in mm -hmm. that cliffhanger. So... We'll see. How will June get her way out of this one? Yeah. You know, or, or, or off-red if anybody yes, in Gilead sorry. is listening. Sorry, under his eye. 
<laughs> but that is Handmaid's Tale season one. Yes. Next time, of course, we'll you know we'll go to season two, and we won't skip for all of those harrowing adventures in the land of Gilead. We'll have other TV shows with the New York double feature of Mad Men and Sex in the City. Yes. Um, snapshots of a city at different times and levels of sexism. We have more movies uh, coming up, classic and new, from our poster. And anything else that you guys want us to do, just let us know in the comments below. We'll be happy to churn them out as we can. And also, you know, we're not just limited to movies here and TV shows. That is true. You know, we're game for music, books, anything really. Oh yeah, I've had plenty of comic books on those shelves written by Kevin Smith that I've been waiting to look at. Until next time, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you so very much for watching. Please stay positive and have a magnificent day. Thanks!